Hello everyone, it's good to be with you today and to continue in our series the I Am Sayings of Jesus. Last time we looked at what Jesus meant when he said I am the door or I am the gate to the sheepfold. Today we're going to look at the second part of that section of scripture when which is probably a little bit more and more known when Jesus said I am the good shepherd. You will find it in John's Gospel chapter 10 um, and the, the whole section is verses 1 to 18. Today we're going to concentrate on verse 10 to 18 but before we do so I'd like to pray and then I'd like to read the first part of the of the um, chapter again. Heavenly Father we thank you that the Lord Jesus is the Good Shepherd. We thank you that he cares for his sheep and we have experience of this many of us that know him and we thank you that we do know him and that he knows us and we pray today that as we look at these scriptures and read them again that you will give us some further understanding we pray these things in Jesus name amen I'm reading from the New King James Version today and I'm going to read the first section down to verse 9 that we covered last time for continuity's sake most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hears his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and find pasture. Now we follow on today's message. When Jesus tells them that he is the good shepherd. And remember, Jesus was speaking to Jewish people. And this actually is made plainer as we read, read on. So verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. Now this is a very oft, a, a much repeated verse. And sometimes it's taken out of context. But however it's taken, it is very, very true. Because the scripture here says that the thief does not come except to kill and to steal and to destroy. The, the thief is the devil and the devil was always up to no good he's a liar from the beginning and he's also a deceiver he deceives us he deceives the brethren and that's why people fall into sin because the devil tempts them and they listen to the devil rather than listening to what God is saying Jesus says I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So Jesus now is promising life. Now everyone who is born into this world is born dead. Everyone is born dead. They have no life. They have natural life but they don't have spiritual life. Jesus is here saying I've come to give them spiritual life. And not only to give a spiritual life, but to give that spiritual life more abundantly. That is perhaps one of the questions you will need to discuss amongst yourselves after this um, session now, because it's so important. What is abundant life? What does it mean to you? What I can say is that what Jesus offers is so completely different to what the devil offers. Now in this life, often what the devil offers looks to be more appealing than what Jesus is offering. 
but the devil is a liar. Jesus says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Pat on us off, we've been watching, sorry, we've been listening to the Bible being read every morning when we have our breakfast, we listen to a section. And we've been recently listening to the section where um, David takes on Goliath and he convinces the king of Israel, Saul, that um, he'd already um, protected his sheep from bears and from lions. And David knew what it was to be a shepherd. And of course, David wrote the 23rd Psalm, didn't he? The Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus says here that a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Now there's two things here. First of all, Jesus says that he's the good shepherd, and then he says that other shepherds are only hirelings but then he says that because he's a good shepherd he gives his life for the sheep now when did Jesus give his life for the sheep well when he died upon the cross of Calvary but then Jesus also says that the hireling flees because he doesn't care about the sheep now a hireling is someone who does not own the sheep when Jesus died upon the cross, he gave his life for his own sheep. The whole world belongs to the Lord. We're the sheep. We're the sheep. And the Lord gave his life for the sheep. And because the Lord gave his life for the sheep, he also not only laid down his life for the sheep, but he also lays down his life on a regular basis. He protects us. So even when we speak about spiritual warfare, we're not actually going into battle on our own. We always go in the strength of the Lord. That's for another subject, the um, spiritual armour. It's the Lord's armour. It's not armour that we somehow um, uh, own ourselves. Every piece of armour is the Lord's armour. Put on the whole armour of God. And it is God who fights for us. And we read that again and again in the Old Testament when Israel were fighting their enemies. When they recognised that it was the Lord that was fighting for them, they always had victory. When they thought that they were doing it in their own strength, they were defeated. Jesus says in verse 14, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So Jesus here is saying that in the way that Jesus knows the Father and the Father knows Jesus, that is how we are to know the Lord ourselves. And it says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep recognise my voice. I said last time that when I was a shepherd, um, for um, sheep that I would call the sheep and the sheep would recognise my voice. It, whenever you've got um, some time to spare, ask Eileen to share with you her story of her pet lamb, Daisy, and what happened. That's just something you might like to ask Eileen about. Then Jesus says, um, verse 18, no one takes my life Sorry, verse 17. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Jesus laid down his life not because he was ordered to do so. He laid down his life voluntarily. Jesus says later on, this command I received from my father, but it wasn't a command um, an order to lay down his life it was the sense in which the father allowed him to lay down his life but it was the desire of Jesus himself because Jesus says no one takes it from me my life but I lay it down of myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again 
Jesus is the only person who has ever lived that has had the power to lay down his own life. You see, everyone else who has ever lived and has died has died because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And even a Christian person who has had their sins forgiven is still subject to death, physical death at this time. But of course, all that's going to change at some time. However, we're not subject any longer to spiritual death because Jesus has set us free from that. But we are certainly subject to physical death. But Jesus was not subject to spiritual or physical death because he'd not committed any sin. And then he says, I have power to take it again. When Jesus rose from the dead, he had the power to take his life back again. He was given that power by God the Father and Jesus was raised through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can't separate God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus goes on to say, um, this command I have received from my father. But going back to verse 16 now, which I missed out deliberately, actually, Jesus said, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. I deliberately left that out because I wanted to return to it to assure ourselves that Jesus gave his life not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. So whether some of you that are listening to this may be of Jewish descent, but the majority of you are probably Gentile descent. But Jesus laid down his life for all of us. And now this is the wonderful thing. This is what he says. Um, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. One flock and one shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. Now I want to share with you some thoughts and um, discussion starters. And here they are. And there's five of them actually. First of all. Would you describe yourself as a follower? Would you describe yourself as a follower? I'm not necessarily talking about um, because you're a Christian, but are you the sort of person that is happy to follow? Second discussion starter. True sheep don't listen to thieves and robbers. Are you ever tempted to listen to stuff you know is untrue? True sheep, Jesus said, will not listen to thieves and robbers. Are you ever tempted to listen to stuff you know is untrue? Jesus offers abundant life. P please discuss what abundance means to you, like fullness, forgiveness, love, etc., Jesus offers abundant life. Please discuss what abundance means to you. Things like fullness, forgiveness, love. Jesus said that his sheep would know him in the same way as he knows his father. Is this your experience? Jesus said that his sheep would know him the same way as he knows his father and his father knows him. Is this your experience? You can share this with your friends in the group. And then finally, why was Jesus able to lay down his life voluntarily? Why could no one kill Jesus without his consent? Why was Jesus able to lay down his life voluntarily? And why could no one kill Jesus without his consent? Thank you for 
letting me join you in your small group today. I hope you enjoy your discussions and see you next week. Bye.